<laughs> hey guys, welcome back. This is our Q&A for the van build series. A lot of you have asked many questions and we thought we'd just house it into one video as best as we can. Um, I kind of took the top questions that have been asked a lot and um, we'll go over that as quickly as possible. <laughs> as we can. So the first question is, did you make Sorry, plans? Sorry, you want to do, do that first question again? <laughs> Go ahead. So the first question is, did he make plans? Did he draw out plans? Do you have a blueprint? Do you sell the plans? Can he, is he for hire? No. <laughs> All of them. You know, it's funny because I just wanted this to be something simple to travel in. It didn't turn out that way. Um, I was just literally going to put a futon in the back of a, of a minivan and plug in a refrigerator and that was it. And But then it turned out I started making some things and it turned out to be more and more and more. So I mean I, I didn't have plans, I wasn't sure how it was going to work out so I just made things and I, and I had to redo a number of things. So that's why in the bed video I go through my thought process because again where you put this, the size, how big you are, where you put the bed is not going to, I'm smaller. So, so someone who's six foot cannot make the bed exactly how I have it because they won't fit in it, you know? Um, so I, I went through how I designed it, how I came up with the, the number. So that way anybody else can redo it using their own measurements. So, so no, no plans. Um, as far as being for, for hire for this, no, uh, this is not my job, uh, my profession. I, I have enough things to, to keep my mind, to keep myself occupied as it is now. Sorry. Um, but again, uh, I, you know, just kind of started building things and see what works out. There's all kinds of ways to do this, all kinds of ways to yeah. come up with very similar things. Okay. Um, the bed design. So the bed design is done in a three part video series. We did that specifically because we got a tons and tons and tons of questions on it. Measurement wise, just like he said, it's just based on our size. We're small people and you, you have to kind of judge it upon, um, what you want exactly in there. Yeah. And if you want to build it exactly how we have in the man, in the bed design videos that go over the exact numbers that I used. But again, if you're going to put this in something other than this one, I don't know if all years of Dodge Grand Caravan are exactly the same size, you know, but again, the idea behind it is in there. So you can then make your numbers based off of that. Okay. The cushions for the bed. The cushions are basically a high density foam. I ordered it um, online and it was the highest density foam I could find because it was only gonna be three inches deep. I do find that that's a little stiff. I would probably go one step below that, not the highest density, but just one below that. And then I ordered fabric. It is a um, ultra suede fabric, so it doesn't stain. It's very soft, so you can lay on it without a sheet or a, um, another blanket. And I had a local upholsterer put those together. I, I definitely cannot sew, um, so a local upholsterer put those together. Okay. Um. The, so we've had a couple of questions on the camera up uh, in the front, how you are able to watch it. The camera in the back, how yeah. I could see it in the front. Yes. So the rear view camera in this obviously normally just turns on when you back up. There's a company called Coast, or there's a company that makes what's called a lock pick. And it's made specifically for all kinds of different uh, vehicles. This radio and this is the my gig. Again, whether that's through all the years or not, or just this year, I, I don't know. Um, but coastaltech.com is where that came from. And it's the my gig pro five or whatever it is. Now yeah. they update them over time. Um, and basically you have to take the radio out and it plugs into the, the box, the, my, uh, the lock pick plugs into it all. And then from there, with we push there's a series of buttons you have to push to do the commands and in this one it happens to be the the button to hang up the phone if you were speaking if you push it twice it turns on the rear view camera so you can turn on the rear view camera at any point in time which gives you then a not just a backup camera but we use it for a rear view mirror camera as we're driving um is it's a backup camera picture so it's not the best picture in the world when it rains it's a little tough um, could you put an actual backup camera and get a better picture? You know, I'm sure you could. And with the lock pick, it looks like you can put an external input into it so you could still play it on your radio if you wanted to go through that. Um, which again, I, it works fine for what I, for what I need. So the lock pick was enough. Cool. Um, okay. Solar roof. Do you have a solar? No, we don't have solar on the roof. Again, because we don't spend a lot of time dry camping, most of the time we're driving, um, the the alternator in this is a 160 amp alternator with a over 200 uh, 
reserve capacity battery, um, I don't find the need for it. We can stay overnight easily, run the, the DVD player, the TV, obviously the refrigerator is always on, even the blender, and not take the battery power down. Now, because we only run a uh, chassis battery that runs everything, um, there's obviously a, a, a voltmeter, a battery monitor inside, so I can watch that, and if we're starting to run down, you just start the you know car and charge that back up. If we were going to dry camp more, um, then absolutely solar on the roof would be worthwhile um, just because it's an easy way to keep the batteries topped off. So our next question is, so there is a kitchen. Um, we'll probably do another video on the kitchen because there are some questions on how we built it and pretty much you built it kind of on the spot. Yeah, exactly. Right. That was the last thing I built and that was because of the fact that um, the bed, obviously we needed a very specific dimensions because we had to be able to sit in it and lay down in it. The, the refrigerator freezer is a certain footprint, so it had to be there. And then that left so much space left for the sink, you know? And uh, so I built that then afterwards. And again, I just built it to fit. Uh, there's been questions on- um, The stow and go. The stow and go, yes, whether that disrupts the stow and go. On the driver's side, it does. You can't open up that panel for the stow and go. But because it's a pass through completely, you can open it up on the passenger side. I built the refrigerator up on a pedestal so you can get underneath there. It leaves this place to store shoes and stuff. But once you pull that out, you can get to the, the stow and go. And then I just have basically a, you know, a plastic, you know, square plastic tote in there and you can pull that across. And there I keep the stuff that we don't get into very often, uh, jumper cables, uh, tool kit, you know, things like that, that once they're pushed underneath there can stay there and we don't actually access often. Cool. Yeah, I noticed that. Um, a lot of questions on the material wise, sheet metal or wood, aluminum, brackets. Um... Yeah, so for the bed, uh, for the bed frame itself, I used aluminum and that's again in the video and I riveted it together. And that's just because that's something I do and I'm comfortable with. I wanted something that was sturdy but took up the smallest footprint possible. You could build that out of two by fours and it would be just as strong, but it takes up more space. So I didn't want to do that. But I still use then wood for the connections to the uh, car itself for what I, because of the fact that um, again, I can cut those then to any size I want. So I can keep trimming it down to build it to fit. That just happens to be what worked out for me. Um, whether you want to use steel for everything, wood for everything, aluminum for everything, it, all those are possible. Yeah, it's based on preference. Yep. So a lot of the other questions, um, like the Velcro for the window coverings, he is redoing that. Why? Well, so again, like a lot of people notice, Lee, I took, it's not sound deadening material. It's actually for um, an engine bay. It's the reflective material that's got then the foam on the other side and then it's adhesive. So you can put it on the top of a, of a hood to stop then heat from transferring through the hood and so forth. So I use that then and I use then the one sticky side of it and I put then a uh, flannel on that. So it's blacked out. So that way, um, that then when it faces the outside is because it's a, a flat black, you blacks out the windows nicely. There's no reflective part of that. And then on the other side, I glued then actually uh, a fake, you know, it's not leather, but it you know looks like leather. It, it, it's just yeah. a fake vinyl material is what it was. And to give a nice interior look and then Velcroed that to the walls. The problem is many people have found is that Velcro when the heat and cold changes just does not stay on. It ends up then coming off, even though the window covering is stiff enough that I can tuck it back in and it lasts, sits for a while, but then it comes off. So I have a plan to rebuild those um, using some sheet plastic and other things. And I'll do a video on that when we put it together, to see if it does better. Um, in these panels that are smaller, um, I actually put then some just some little steel bands to help hold it in place and that works out fine um in the small ones the velcro holds up nice enough because there's enough things pushing up against it it's really just the two that are on the the main windows um uh, the side windows that give us the most problems uh porta potty I, <laughs> i'm fine so um we didn't put a porta potty because it's not that wasn't the intention um because we do stop at rest areas and wherever gas stations when we get gas but no we did not put a porta potty in there and same thing we don't dry camp a lot so we don't stay when we're staying it's usually um, again at a rest area or a you know again 
uh, a parking lot of a you know whatever business depending on whatever allows right. you to stay overnight things like that so because of that we use their restrooms so we didn't have a need for a porta potty there is enough room underneath here that you could put one in if you wanted to um, but again for us it just wasn't necessary um, so there's a question about minivans in campgrounds in, and I've heard a couple people have mentioned that that campgrounds don't allow minivans uh, you know, again, I've never run into that. I don't see why that would be an issue. Now, having said that, though, we do know campgrounds that won't let you stay with anything but a Class A. There are definitely campgrounds that have requirements on Class A's that you have to have this. There's no tent camping, you know. Um, so, again, I, I've avoided those places, so maybe that's why we haven't had a problem. But I don't see that. We stay at state parks, you know, often when we travel. That's probably one of our favorite places to stay at state parks, things like that. So state parks, if they allow tent camping, I can't imagine why they wouldn't allow a minivan. I mean, if you drove up there, unpacked a tent, what difference does it make? Um, we did run into in um, South Carolina where they had tent camping and plug-in camping. They would not let you sleep in your vehicle in the tent camping part because that was strictly for tent camping. But any place that we've been that, like I said, that's been a state park or campground that allows you know, regular smaller campers or pop-up campers, things like that. We, we never had an issue with it. And then this is a 3.6 liter version. Yep. And then um, was there welding involved? Because there's some people like welding is, might be out of their scope or the only be done. You know, I did weld um, the, basically the, the frame that I built the sink on. That's the only thing that was welded. The this the chassis for this for the, uh, the frame for the bed was all um, riveted together, and I could have done the entire uh, basically frame and everything for the um, sink and and water compartment. I could have done that all out of wood. Um, I, I didn't. There was no reason that I had to weld. I, again, I just had some material around here, and it made at the time I thought, you know, well, I want this to be strong because of the weight and so forth. But you know, truthfully, I only have five gallons of of water in there so it, it's the weight there's no real weight by any means so um there wasn't any need to build a metal chassis for it so you could easily do it with all wood or again aluminum for that part so there's no welding that's necessary okay one last question and i wanted to put it out there because if you've been following along um in the racing video we were in our rv and we've had that longer than we've had the minivan but i wanted to share with you guys why we chose why you got the minivan and the difference between a full-size rv and an rv a minivan well they, they serve two different purposes in, in my mind the rv is wonderful if you're going to be in it for a long time especially when we when we were traveling with the kids the kids are older now so they're not traveling with us um, but it is not inexpensive to travel in a big rv the thing gets eight miles to the gallon this gets you know yeah. 28 miles to the gallon so it is a significant difference when and you're driving to move around. <clears throat> absolutely when you're driving in the motor home you know you have to stay you know on bigger roads you have to make sure that you can when you need to get gas you got to go to a truck stop or someplace that trucks can drive through because you can't just drive that underneath every awning out there so um, this then I can go and we can drive the minivan we can go into the city we can go anywhere we want we don't have to plan the trip out as much and with the gas mileage uh, that this gets, we can go for, you know, I mean, again, a quarter of the cost. And uh, like I said, this is made for traveling. The, the motorhome is made for staying in. So if we were gonna go somewhere for a week or two, we would take the motorhome most likely, just because that's something then we can stay in. But again, when you do that, you gotta tow a vehicle with you. you have, we have to tow something behind us so we have a way to get around. Yeah. Um, this, obviously, um, you just unplug it and you know, drive where you want to go. So uh, come back to the campground and open up the back and plug it back in and you're ready to go. So it is it is much simpler, much easier, quicker. Um, so, and, and definitely faster. The motorhome is not made for speed. And, and I don't mean just like driving down the highway, but every time you get on and off the interstate, every time you try to drive anywhere, um, you know, the motorhome definitely takes longer. You gotta be very careful with your route and stuff like that. Yeah. This is much quicker and easier to travel in. So this is a travel vehicle that's a motorhome to stay in. So um, just to let you know, when he first brought this up, I thought it was kind of like, why? And actually I ended up liking a lot. It is it it is easier to get from one day's destination to the next. And it kind of, it's um, best of both worlds. I get to stay at a nice hotel. And cause that's, I like doing that. And, but also he likes to drive. 
so we get to also sightsee at the same time and it's all in one so it does make it we kind of fill both sides yeah and this is a great road trip vehicle that was the whole point of this for us it's a road trip vehicle it's a vehicle you can get in you, you don't have to have a destination you can just get in it and you can say hey where's the weather nice where do we want to go yeah. you want to go up into the mountains you want to go down to the beach you want to go where do you want to go and then we can go that direction and you're not getting partway there and getting tired and then you know spending whatever on a hotel literally for five hours to sleep to jump back in and go back on the road. You pull over, you stop, you know, again, we have water, we take out our contacts, brush our teeth, wash our face, go to sleep, and it's comfortable to sleep in. Get up the next day and go whichever other direction we wanna go. Um, once we get to our destination, then again, get a hotel or a VRBO and, and stay in that. So, and, and again, there are definitely people who use these full time or who, who would go for the week and camp in it the whole time. Um, it's no smaller than a tent is. It's no, it's definitely more comfortable than a tent would be. So yeah. um, it's, an, it's a fancy tent camping if you want to think of it that way. So there'd be nothing wrong with doing that. That's just not, and it's not how we use it. And, and, it, and you know what, that's actually not true because Myrtle Beach, not, well, not Myrtle Beach, it was south of Myrtle Beach, whatever. There was a weekend, we did a week in this um, at a campground. So, you know, there, there are times that we've stayed at a campground and used their facilities and shower and so forth and stayed in this for a bunch of nights. So yep. it, it has happened that way too. Yep. So, well, cool. I hope this answered a lot of your questions. One question, I last one is, um, have you ever thought of a Sprinter van? Well. We've toyed around with it because I was actually in one. I built this. <laughs> because at the beginning, I was going alone. Christine says, I'm not staying in a van. What are you, are you crazy? No way, you're, you're dumb. And, and I wanted to travel and I wanted to travel inexpensive so I could do it more. I wanted to just pick up on a weekend and go somewhere and, and I want to sightsee, I want to drive. I don't want to fly, I want to drive. I want to see the sights. The US is so big, there's so many things to see here and you get a different feel for it when you travel through these towns and you, you stop in them and you you know eat lunch and you meet people and you know so that's what I wanted to do. Um, and Christine said, no way, I'm not doing it. So, um, <laughs> and so I built this really for one person. This was, this was the idea behind this was for one person to be in it. Uh, I built the bed big enough for two just in case, you know, uh, Christine changed her mind. And uh, so now knowing that she enjoys doing it, um, a sprinter or something bigger is definitely on the list, but not right now. No, the amount of time it took to do this and all the other things we have going on, it just, it just doesn't make sense at this very moment. Yeah. So hope you enjoyed that. If you have any more questions, just comment below and thank you for being here. And thank you for all the new subscribers because you guys are the ones that are bringing up my channel and uh, very grateful. Later.